Hi, Josie Townsend here. Today I'm actually with uh, Tim McMahon having a cuppa. So Tim, you're a new dad. How's that going for you? Great. Second time around. Um, yep. Little girl and little boy two weeks ago. So. And you, you told me you're getting sleep. I am. And you're he's, actually waking a child up. He's How, why great. Why do you do that? He, uh, <laughs> he just sleeps happily there and it's wow. kind of like, do we feed him enough? You know when you, you get to like early morning and you wake up thinking I should have fed him and it's daylight? Like, so. uh, can't recall that ever <laughs> happening, but I'll take your word My for it. My wife's a trooper. She's up and up and at him whenever she needs to be. So, yeah, going really well. Wonderful. Now, your wife's quite... Um, you mentioned the other day... What, what, what if you called her superwoman? Did you? Because <laughs> she is amazing. Look, she, she's... Uh, she is. She's really superwoman. So, we've got our two kids now. Um, and also a demanding business. So, she's yep. got a hair salon in town. Um, yep. Clay Hair on West Street. Yep. Sure. And, give um, it a plug. Give it a plug. Yeah. Clay Hair. Um, <laughs> Over there on West Street, Especially opposite the hospital. Especially if there's a, a Wonder Woman running it. So Look, she's amazing. She'll be up at five feeding the baby, then doing the business stuff, paying the wages, and then uh, she'll be in there having a chat to the girls, you know, every now Fantastic. and then as well. So, yeah, she's great and loving motherhood second time around. So it's really Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Motherhood is a wonderful thing. A wonder mm. And so is fatherhood, both of them. It's just a I just a change nappies. Thing. Like, <laughs> go out of fashion. I'm so glad. <laughs> I have no more nappies. So yeah. that's a good thing. Okay, so you're doing some really cool stuff. So we'll start, at, you're a teacher? Yes. Yeah, what do you teach? Um, I'm, uh, history and legal studies are my two uh, main areas. I sort yep. of uh, coming into the workforce. I didn't know if I want to be a lawyer or not. So I chose teaching, majoring in law. Okay. And yep. um, I'm doing history as well. So both great subjects keep me busy and very kind of active in the community. And what school are you at? You're a Christian Outreach College. Yep. So been there a while now um, moved to Toowoomba for what I thought would be a year and found a great little community minded school and, and, and funnily enough we moved to Toowoomba in the same year too we so did I think about 2009 yep. yeah, and I, I, but about. I was actually five months pregnant with my last child when I oh, came right, here no. so I was a, a young newly married teacher from Mackay yep. where the department sent me first and moved away here and thought I'll give it a go for a year and then move back Where's to your the wife from here? she's from Caloundra with me okay. we both grew up in Caloundra and met there and yeah uh, then I was sent up to Mackay, she came and then followed me to Toowoomba and here we now, are. Now, I'll just throw this in. We actually had a little chat, didn't we? We both agree that an inland surf beach theme park in Toowoomba would be a okay. brilliant thing to do. Toowoomba Regional Council, if you're listening. And Kelly GCE Slater and inspired... State government and federal government. Kelly <laughs> Slater inspired the perfect tube surf beach. Mm. Put it in Toowoomba, let's make it happen. I think that would be brilliant. <laughs> okay, so you're doing some other cool stuff too, though. So... Um, you applied and was were accepted into doing um, a special trip. Correct. To so Queensland Government Department of Education and Training. Uh, it's called the Premier's Anzac Prize. Um, they basically take school students and school teachers from all over Queensland yep. over to the Western Front to commemorate Anzac Day. So yep. April two thousand and eighteen, we'll be taking you know a team from all over the state off to the uh, the Western Front, Villas Bretonneux for Anzac Day service. So but there's a nice little twist to this, isn't there? Mm. Because what you've been able to do is um, research a couple of locals from Toowoomba. Yeah, so... And choose a couple of people it's, who it's you could follow. Fascinating. The, um, the, the main part of the, of the whole trip is, you know, we can't just go and rock up and do nothing. So mm. finding amazing people that we can commemorate where they lived, where they were, they grew up and where they fell on the front line. So I've spent hours scrolling through every person that came from Toowoomba and there are some really, really fascinating stories of people who are in similar places of life to me who did amazing things for their community and Toowoomba dropped everything, went yep. over to the Western Front and often didn't come back. So, so you chose three people? I did, yeah. So we'll start with this guy last because we'll carry okay, on with a sure. bit about him. So who were the other two? So one of them is my great-grandfather. He's not okay. from Toowoomba, um, but he was awarded the Military Cross, wounded, came home and everything. And so I'm hoping to be standing at the site where he was awarded the military cross 100 years to the day. Wow. Um, I might miss it by a day or two, but yeah. that's going to be crazy. So a little mm. town called Sailly le sec in northern France that I've only heard, I've never been to, so wow. looking to go there. So, so then we come to George Harry Turner, mm. really interesting guy. You've brought some papers in um, about him. Um, and where did he work? I mean, this is incredible. Like, you don't... Yeah, look, it's, it's an interesting one because with a name like George Turner, there's 100 million of them, right? But yeah. I've found his files on the, the War Memorial website. Um, very little information on him. He was born in London, sometime yeah. then moved to Toowoomba, 
and became a professional musician, violinist. And where did he work? So this source tells us he was actually one of the head musicians at the Empire Theatre in Toowoomba, um, the Philharmonic Society in Toowoomba as well, and he was just a touring violinist that his home was the Empire Theatre. So That's amazing. It's crazy when his occupation is listed as professional musician violinist and the extra notes say Empire Theatre Toowoomba. So. Yeah, and it was quite sad, wasn't it? Because, I mean, he, he actually passed away pretty quickly when he went over there, it wasn't Yeah, it? of all reports, he was a nice guy, loved by everyone, mm. and he's gone off to the Western Front and... It was just a standard day when he, he went out of his trench and was killed instantly by machine gun fire. And there are several other people that uh, saw it and wrote and they don't know where he was buried and they just know he was definitely killed and no cross was ever put up. So, oh, it must be sad. So, I mean, one of the things you were quite keen to do and to see is if you could find any of his family. And... Mm. Well, I mean, I want to know what drives a guy like him. Professional mm. musician got the world at his feet to drop everything, go over to the Western Front. Uh, and he was killed instantly. So George Turner is his name, 41st Battalion. If there are any of his family in Toowoomba yeah. still, I mean, I know he's originally from the UK. I'd love to get in touch. It almost have sounds a like chat. a love story thing, doesn't it? Where, you know, you could actually make quite a lovely little film mm. about something like this. It's interesting, isn't it? And I was, I was intrigued. I was actually wondering if you guys were going to be followed at all because, you know, tracing the steps of some of these stories would be quite incredible. Mm. I mean, we're trying to do a bit of storytelling here too, but, you know, that this is a... An amazing story for I think a musician to do that. What stood out for me, I'm one ounce of the skill of this guy. I'm a retired pub muso. Played the drums. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> there you not, go. not by what, any what, means. What, what instrument? Yeah, I was a drummer in okay. a few pub bands in I, the I used early twenties. Play drums. Oh really? Go. Sure, I've got a little bit of Triple J airtime somewhere <laughs> there. Um, but I was classical piano in school. Moved to drums. Never really classical you know, piano drums. Well, that's, it was kind that, of didn't get cool anymore when you're a teenage yeah, okay. boy you know what? Yeah. so self-taught Drums drummer are, okay. um and this guy a musician who's obviously so much more talented and dedicated and then mm. <laughs> gives it all up to go and fight for his country so that mm. That's amazing quite amazing isn't mm. it? okay so let's talk about something else that i know we both have in common politics you're quite a quite keen <laughs> on politics oh I, I believe advocacy is important yep. i think that we live in a society where if we have a need or a change or the people that are representing us aren't doing a good job, we have a right. We have a, not a right, we almost need to stand up and say something about mm. that. And I think it's very important that people like you and I have a voice and say this isn't right and we need something done about it. Yeah. So have you, uh, so I won't ask you any too difficult a question. <laughs> um, so, so how do you think people can do, because this always intrigues me as well, mm. because, and you're obviously teaching our young people. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I always find really interesting is that so many young people, so many older people, they actually don't have the knowledge and mm. we don't offer a place where people can actually just learn about politics because it's daunting, you know. It's, if you, you know, you you probably teach some of it within mm. the frameworks of what you're teaching but for a lot of young people they don't get that opportunity and a lot of people just missed it too so I was what do you think the solution is like it's hard because people feel like they're not empowered because they mm. don't know the right words to use they don't know how each level of government works mm -hmm. I think a lot of legal studies incorporates politics and mm. you know training the next generation to be active informed citizens is a huge part I encourage debate my classes are fiery at best um, when we've got all these different viewpoints, no right answer and being thrown around the room. So you have different viewpoints? Absolutely, yeah. I, I, I totally disagree that the teacher's job is to say that's what the right answer is. That was like pre-World War Two that era. And I think <laughs> now we yeah. live in a phase where, where we need those different viewpoints mm -hmm. and... Um, different groups of people have different beliefs and how can one person expect to know everything about them and what they're going through. So mm. I think uh, advocacy and advocating for what you think is important is very important. What about the people who are really disillusioned and they just, feel, you know, because I, having, you know, been very quite interested in having a voice, I guess, and feeling that there are lots of groups that aren't represented mm. anymore, how do you do it? Like, how do we encourage people to step up and talk or ask, just ask questions even? Because that's the other thing I've, like, I've, you know, 
I find it really interesting having doing the pub test, you know, because you have really great conversations mm-hmm. at a pub, right? You have a couple of glasses of something. And, and that's when everyone can talk. It's great. Yeah. You let their hair down. Maybe we need bit. to move politics into the pub yeah, more regularly. Yeah, let's do that. What do you think? <laughs> it, it's, it saddens me that my age group was, you know, the least represented in the, the plebiscite that we have. Like, mm. people in my age, they just don't care. And I really, I think it's important that mm. politics uh, affects us so much more than we realise, local, state and federal. And... We need to be involved. Now, that's the trick, isn't it? Most people don't recognise mm. the impact that actually has on us. And and I'll ask you another question. What do you think of political behaviour at the moment? So, Oh, we're going there. <laughs> oh, and I don't, I'm, One not, get, I'm not talking oh. about any particular party mm. or anything like that. Mm. I'm just saying in general, the perception from the public about, you know. I think a lot of people who are the I don't really care crew are the lesser of two evils kind of thing it's it it, they don't really see anyone that resonates really well with them and i think maybe politics in australia has come to a point where we have large parties who are trying to please everyone and as a result pleasing no one and i think that's a bit like life isn't it (laughs) you can't please everybody Mm. can you so it's an interesting um demographics where minor parties and ones that have otherwise been called extremist weirdos <laughs> are getting a lot of air time. So. They are getting a lot of air time. Mm, so interesting and I think um, the the new generation of Australia, my age, is, is just had enough yeah. with well, the... Well, caveat this, that this is actually being filmed right before the Queensland mm, government election. So about we're seeing a lot of it away, at the moment. Yeah, pickets yeah, on so every it's corner. Interesting. And... Um, so, so what do you want for your kids? Like what, what do you want to teach your kids? Like... I mean, everyone's that's kind of a big question but you know you're yeah. a teacher and everyone's kind of asking me when when are you gonna run for politics and I think for me there's a season for everything mm-hmm. and right now I have an amazing family of beautiful babies and you know yeah. they're a blessing and I think the season for me is spending as much time with I can as I can looking after them and mm-hmm. you know maybe when they're grown up and I, I firmly, firmly believe that I have these beautiful babies. I, I need to spend as much time, time as I can with them. So I tell you what, they grow up quick. They do, yeah, and it, <laughs> they they'll be very quickly. sending me off to university fees before I know it. But yeah. for now, I think, yeah, um, yeah I, I want to teach my kids that I'm home and I'm there. Yeah. And what, but what about? I guess I was leaning more towards the um, speaking up. Mm. You know, um, it's not always easy to speak up. It's quite a tricky thing to do, and I've got. Three children, but my middle daughter was always my very quiet one, mm. and she's hit almost eleven, like a couple of weeks away. And I've been impressed that um, she went to a school that encouraged her to flower mm-hmm. pretty well, and that she speaks up, <laughs> and she's no longer this quiet, shy mm. child. Um, she'll actually speak up, and I think, um, especially, um, I don't know what your feelings are. Like, do you? In your your classroom, are girls or boys more vocal or oh, if there's not a... It no. just depends on the child. Yeah, it depends on the child. I think I think we struggle a lot with tall poppy syndrome. Everyone's too scared to speak up because mm. they might be shut down or, you know, branded something and, you know, they don't want to be known as that. So they don't speak up. And I think yeah. putting that aside and saying this is important to me, um, I want to be heard, is a, is a massive skill that we need to teach our children, mm. yeah. It is, and to do it in a way that it will be heard, mm. not just. Um, I grew up with a crazy mother who spoke up a lot, but she gets so flustered because she mm. was so <laughs> impassioned by things that sometimes the message got a little bit lost. I think empathy is important. You can go on your soapbox rant all you want, but if you're not thinking of how another person's being treated by that, it's yeah. it's a little hard. <laughs> it is a little hard, and so um, you've been in Toowoomba now for well, nearly nine yeah. years. Almost 10, yeah, something Almost like 10, that. getting close. So wh- what do you think of the place? Like, what are you... This city is you... amazing. Honestly, I, I thought I'd do a year here and do a year here and leave. Mm. Um, the more I stay here, the more I love it. And um, I, I think it's a very easy town to get your little clique of people in your little demographic of, for me, South Toowoomba mm-hmm. and stay there. And, yeah. you know, you've got... It's a big enough city, isn't it, that you it's can do that and you don't you realise can... there's all these other mm. groups you don't know. We were talking about it. There's all <laughs> yeah. these little groups that don't yeah. really interact with each other. and you Three know, or this four is of them my... do, but there's another yeah, 10 yeah, or 15 yeah. over here. Yeah. And so I think it's small. It's large enough that you can do that, but small, still small enough that you, close. you know there's those other kind of people out there. So mm. I love our city. I love where it's heading. Um, just that kind of 
a couple of hours away from the coast and the growth that we're seeing. And but if there was a inland surf beach theme oh, park here, after we do the inland surf could, beach, I want, I want <laughs> a no lift for the uh, <laughs> a chairlift for the mountain bike riders on the yep. side of the range. That's a huge thing. And what else? <laughs> everyone says if we had That's a, a snow uh, a, a oh, mountain snow. with snow on it or a beach, Actually, it'd be great. It's never going to have that, but well, it could. Well, Nothing's we'll impossible. Put a little machine on tabletop or something. <laughs> little <laughs> fake snow machine on. How about how about we have one of those inland snow machine up there? Inland ski slopes like Dubai and Grand Central. How about we go for that? <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, thank you, Tim, for coming along and having a couple with me. Um, My pleasure. Really enjoyed it. Best of luck on your trip. So he's heading off in April, and hopefully we'll get a chance to speak to him again when he gets back. So I have a number of people who I'm commemorating. George Turner is one of them, but. I might leave the full names of other people in the comment section. Yep. And we can in the comment section, and we can, um, if any family members are around, love to get in touch. That and sounds catch up. wonderful. Wonderful. So thank you again. Um, we'll see you again soon. Thanks.